Hello. This is Tess and Tell. And you are listening to Sea World, World Podcast. Podcast. Scene World Podcast for those guys from that thing. How's it going? Hello. Good, 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 good. Actually, very thrilled. Christmas coming up and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Santa, Santa, which we didn't get for an interview yet for some reason. It's still November, so I mean, there's plenty of time. We could, you know, <laughs> December's right, not quite here yet. Right. right. Momentarily, we're going to be talking to uh, Vanessa Ortega. She is. Um, She's the, the the first draft, the first round draft pick of the Championship Gaming Series TV show. Um, she went undefeated in 2007 to win first place in the DOA 4 female individual season. Uh, 2008, she her team won again first place. So she's a professional e-gamer. Uh, she she does a lot of this stuff uh, more more part time now. She doesn't do it professionally so much, but we'll, we'll be talking to her momentarily. Um, before we do that. Actually, I should just like bash, start bashing an iPad around whenever I, whenever it comes time to crinkle the paper. <laughs> Be like, look, I moved into the 20th century. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so actually, we had the idea of talking to an e-gamer since a while, since we talked to the Fractals in February, and um, yeah, you know, so we had this idea of. Talking to an e-gamer. And, Thanks to um, Skype, it almost didn't happen. Yeah, well, we had really, we really had an issue for some reason when, when one of when one of the two of us would join in a call with her, then the group call would not be established, but the call would hang up. So we decided to instead make a group call conversation with her over her phone. So please apologize for the little yeah, not, phone quality. It's not that bad. I mean. So we'll be talking to her in a minute. Um, in the meantime, um, in the meantime, what's what's going on? Not you know, we just did a podcast not very long ago. This will be our second in November. So that's we're we're kind of um, whew, we're we're sort of doubling up on it here. Um, last time we spoke to Adam Bati from Konami uh, about Pro Evolution Soccer, and I you know I can't. There's not much that's gone on since then. Um, by the time this is out, uh, we should be getting really close to the last night at the museum uh, for the, the museum shows that have been going on, that Jörg's been doing through the um, the Film and Video Museum, or Film and Game Museum, Frankfurt. Uh, and our guest will be, and I, I, I'll be there for the last one as well, but but our, our, the guest that we're going to be talking to will be Crystal Herring from the Frag Dolls, formerly of the Frag Dolls, I should say. Right, right, yeah. So, to to put things correct, um, the film museum in Frankfurt yes. is still having the exhibition, e- exhibition, film and games, but um, the events are stopping earlier. So you can still go and see the exhibition, which I can really suggest and re- recommend because I saw it and it's looking great. It's going on till the. Th- um, 31st of January. Yep. And even companies like Nintendo and so on took part in the exhibition, so it's really worth it. And, well, so, Crystal Herring, yes, nowadays she is at Twitch. Yes. You know, so we will talk about that. And, um, yeah, so that will be pretty interesting because almost a year passed till then. And now she is marketing events manager at Twitch, and we will talk about that, what it means yeah. to be that. Yeah. And hear about, you know, the transitions that she's made and all the, you know, just basically catch up and, and see what's been going on since we, we last kind of ventured into that water. So that'll be Talking fun. to the poor guys of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, we've we've talked about Extra Life every podcast that we've done since the frag dolls and um 
the game night is over. We did the game day. It's done with. Um, I just found out that New Jersey uh, gamers for for New Jersey specialized uh, children's specialized hospital in New Jersey, we've raised one hundred twenty thousand six hundred and forty four dollars for that hospital. So that's pretty awesome. Um, Great. Extra Life itself is not over yet. It's going to keep going through the end of the year. So everyone can still go to the website. Go to extra-life.org slash participant slash AJH for me and slash NAFCOM for Jurg. And you guys can still donate and, you know, add to what we, has already been raised. That would be that would be cool. Even though we're not doing any more 24-hour gaming marathons this year. Though I might go on there and just play some games for an hour one night or something just to just to do something with Twitch. Who hmm. knows? Who knows? I don't know. I've got there's there's things, there's options, there's things to do. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, we have several ideas and yeah. we will try to get some guests or some cooperation. But that also depends on other people, not on us. You had this invitation from Richie Knuckles to do something at his place. Yep. Over Twitch, uh-huh. which is actually what you are planning to do next year. So, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So, so that'll be fun. That'll be fun. And we'll see so. where, where it goes. We'll see what, what we can do with it. But, yep. So what else is going on? <laughs> well. <laughs> Talk to me, Yurgatron. Yes, I'm I'm working on the unboxing of the Commodore phone video. Yes, yes. AJ is working on... I'm working <laughs> a on a video game, game con. con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it'll it'll yeah. be out soon. It'll be uh, it'll be there. Yes. So, and, yeah. Hopefully all so, this stuff will be out by the time you guys see this. Um, I don't know what time... When, do, when are we planning to put out the unboxing of the Commodore phone? Because I haven't gotten one yet. I, and at this point, we're not sure if... If I was sent one, or if just Jorg was sent one, or, or whatnot. So I, I will ask Paolo Besser. And, and I plan to release it until the next weekend latest okay so we'll yeah. have so hopefully by the time you hear this we'll have an unboxing up online that you guys can watch and you can you can sort of see the 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 unboxing of the new commodore smartphone which should be yeah should be entertaining so give me give me time until the 20 uh <sighs> you know like like early december latest okay. Something. Okay. Yeah. At some point, we don't make promises. Things will just come out when they come out. Well, so far, so far, we don't make promises about when exactly things come out, but we never wait too late, and we never get things That's not a done. Good so. question for the listeners, which is, you know, we tend to do these podcasts uh, when we get them done. We, you know, if we have a guest, if someone else comes in, and we've got somebody extra, then hey, we'll do two a month because you know we want to make use of, of everyone that we can get. Now, but that that means that sometimes there's two a month, sometimes there's one a month, and when they happen during the month varies depending on you know what's going on with us, what's going yeah, on with our guests. We also had some months where we didn't have a guest, so right. we had, we actually had also two gaps right. or something. Right. So, so my question is then, as listeners, would you guys rather have things as they are now, or would you like us to stick to a schedule of say the fifteenth of each month we release a podcast? Which is what we do with the magazine, right, kind right. of. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's just a a question for people that are that are, that are paying attention to this, whether whether they would like us to be more consistent or whether they like us to keep going doing what we're doing, and mm. you know, just messing around. Well, both is fine for us actually, and you can you can send your answer uh, to podcast at sceneworld dot org, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then we'll we'll get to H A and me. Yep. And we tend to answer our emails. Yep, yep. Despite we are getting a nearly 500 per day. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's totally what we're getting. <laughs> it's all for, yeah. it's all for, like, it's all for Viagra and, and adult underwear. <laughs> 90 percent to spam. Yeah. yeah, anyway. Um, so, yes. So, this time we had a very enjoyable interview. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, well, hey, she's waiting right there, so let's let's not just talk about it. Let's get it right into it here. Right. So we're talking with Vanessa Ortega. Yes. Um, well, welcome to the podcast uh, after after all that. <laughs> Many <laughs> failed attempts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. I had my little dog keep me company, so it was okay. I had a, a companion while I waited. 
Yeah, I've got two of them sitting on my lap here. Uh, that's where her little choice is right now, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's usually not this um, docile, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> so, so we are talking to you today um, on the topic of e-gaming. Well, so, per- well um, professional, professional e-gaming specifically. Yes. Pro gaming. Mm-hmm. So um, let's 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 start with how actually did you become a gamer? Well, when I first started gaming, I was a little tiny thing. I was probably about five years old, six. I was a little toddler, but my brother was actually um, a very big gamer, so he was always the one getting systems and. Uh, I was one of those tag-along little sisters, so I'd be the one bothering my brother all the time until eventually he's like, if you're going to be here and you're going to bother me, why don't you pick up the controller and play with me? And then ever since then, you have not been able to tear me away from uh, any type of controller or keyboard. I, I have seen in your YouTube video where you actually tell your story that in the first years, you actually were just hammering the controller and not really interested in, in the gaming performance at all. <laughs> exactly. I was the biggest button masher, especially when it came to fighting games. My brother was actually a big fighting game player. So um, as a kid, I had no idea what inputs were, what juggles were. So I would just mash and mash and mash. And then I thought I was so good because I'm like, oh, see, I landed a 10-hit combo and I hit you. I'm so much better than you. Until eventually, as I got older, I'm like, oh, there's more strategy, and I can do a lot more than, you know, push the pretty buttons. And then my brother started teaching me a little bit more about it, and then I got to the point where I was able to compete. And you were drafted pretty high as far as, um, and you were you were actually drafted, like, you know, how, how does that work exactly? Because because I don't know too much of the background. I, I, I did some research on it, and it said you were drafted fairly highly. In, in gaming and, and yes. is that kind of like like just the way like regular sports work just sort of actually this was a different concept so direct tv gave the green light for a series called championship gaming series so mm-hmm. there were whispers around about it amongst us because what the back in the day the doa which is that our live community was a little bit tight-knit so they would be sharing some information saying hey there's this new uh, there's this new thing that's popping up, so it's going to be televised. It's going to be competition, and they're looking for Dead or Alive players. So there's going to be females and males drafted together, and it's going to be legitimately like a real sport draft, you know, like football, everything. So there's going to be a first-round draft pick. There's going to be a commissioner. We're going to televise it. It's going to be a job. And so as us, we were just like little kids and we're just like oh wow that's really neat and so we would practice and train and then eventually we got the information that the draft would be or the combine which would be just a free-for-all competition would be held in los angeles so all of us started getting our information ready and our tickets ready and then we all ended up in la trying to get into the series and hopefully be a paid professional gamer Hmm. and 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 in, in practicing for this, like I, I, that must be not that easy to do because, like, oh, I'll, no. <laughs> like I'll sit down and I'll play a game for ten minutes and then I'll get annoyed and I'll leave it and I I can't look at it again for for an hour. So I mean, I can only imagine like how much kind of training would you put in for this and practicing for this? Well, especially when you're competing, I'd say training can really vary. Back when I was in the championship gaming series, I would practice for hours upon hours. Sometimes it would be about 10 hours a day. There's just so much to learn, so much intricacies, and you have to realize what your character strengths are, what the weaknesses are, certain matches. So you really have to analyze it from a lot of angles to, I mean, you're getting paid. You can't just lose otherwise right. you're not going to have a job so you're it's pretty much the same thing and to the, everyone it would just seem as oh my god it's video games it must have to be the best job ever but it's to the point where you have to do that it becomes stressful to all right i need to put in these hours if i lose i'm done to 
it kind of takes away the fun factor sometimes. Right. Yeah, I can. I can. We, Jorg and I just recently did this extra life thing where we had to game for 24 hours straight. And it was, I mean, that right there, that was, that was murder. I mean, I, it, that, that was brutal. So I can only imagine having to do it day in and day out as a, as an actual profession. I mean, that's. Oof. Yes. And they, I've seen some of the 24 hour streams and kudos to them if they can actually do it straight. I mean, at least for us, if we're training, we can take breaks every now and then and then come back, yeah. go in, go out. But to do it completely straight, uh, they must have some willpower and determination. <laughs> I'll give them that. Well, yeah, that's the difference actually between between competition playing, I guess, and um world record hunting because i also i also talked to um to walter day which you probably know and and billy mitchell and you know billy was the majestic one of those, billy mitchell we have yeah. to quantify that <laughs> <laughs> yeah one of those nice. who, who who plays for like i don't know 40 hours or something in a row to wow. to break the world record and go to the kill screen so i guess i guess at oh least you can you can take breaks and stuff yeah. Oh my lord. <laughs> Kudos to them. I could not pull forty hours straight. <laughs> well well he told me he told me you would you would pile up enough lives so you actually have a break to go to, to the toilet without dying too often or something. So <laughs> Oh <that's... laughs> at least we got to do that. Oh my lord. I always just figured yeah. they just kinda like stuck a bucket under the machine and just you just stand in the bucket. And... He's like, okay, guys, i got to step away for a sec. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so so actually, um, when when did this competition gaming started for real? Because um, on on the source that I saw, there, there are just particularly mentioned the years 2007 and 2008. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that was when the championship gaming series started. It was, I believe, yeah, around two thousand seven, two thousand eight. And nowadays, you're doing it like part time or something. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, it used to be my main profession. That's what I did because I. Um, I used to work other odd jobs before. Um, I'm just gonna call it CPS for now. Um, Started and then from there I was just fully employed by them and then I just did that full time and now um, the series went under around 2000 late 2008 2009 so we were no longer being paid by the company so we had a I had to find something else and there was nothing that would consistently pay me as a pro gamer I mean you can't look in the classified acts oh pro gamer wanted. So I had to look at something else to keep myself afloat. And um, I was, like I said, just doing odd jobs, but I still do my gaming thing. I just can't dedicate all of my time to it at this point. I would love to. If I could, I would. But I mean, now I have to find something to pay the bills sometimes. So I just try to do it as much as I can, given my schedule. And that's kind so of something that we've we've heard before in that, you know, um Gaming as a as a profession and as a sport, even as a competitive thing, isn't really given the yeah. same kind of. Um, it's not given the same kind of consideration that competitive sports or, you know, even like something like competitive chess or tabletop games or anything is. The 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 gaming right. like that is kind of marginalized a little bit. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yes, I mean, unless there's a specific game that you play that is really hot and there's tons of tournaments for it, which. And at the same point, too, um, you can't win every tournament. So a lot of the times you're going to take a hit if you're not. Even you could be on top of your game, but this is, you know, it's that old saying, there's always somebody out there better than you. So right. you're always taking that chance every time you fly out to these tournaments and compete. There's a good chance you might win, but then there's a chance you might not. Mm -hmm. Well, I have read that you are among the top five top players. And that are alive. Um, I might. Yes, I was at the top of my game. I was the first draft pick. I've won a few uh, major tournaments, a few grassroots tournaments. And I just I just dedicated a lot of time and energy. And I loved actually what I did. And I love the game and the series still to, till to this day. But isn't there a point um, where, where the game stops being fun for you and enjoyable for you? 
Uh, I would say de- Dead or Alive never stopped being fun for me. It just putting in as much hours was just not as, I guess you could say it was not as fun where I would just love playing DOA all the time, but then the added pressure kind of made me feel, okay, this isn't fun. I can't just play. I have to pretty much learn everything that goes in. I have to know everything about my character. I need to know what she can do. So it's not so much even playing. It's just you're studying the game now at that point. And that's a, it's a pretty uh, niche um, kind of specialty in that your primary game that you, you play is Dead or Alive. And right. at some point that game is going to be, the new versions are going to come out or they're going to, something else is right. going to become the big game. And so at some point that kind of becomes like a, like almost obsolete. So how do you kind of like maintain like like where you are in the face of new stuff coming in and revisions and, and different things that, that are taking over that kind of, that niche? Uh, that's a good question because actually um, one of the more recent ones came out is Better Alive 5 and it is a complete turnaround from the previous installment and my character, like, they didn't change too much, but there was some system changes, which I had to adapt to, whereas a lot of other competitors, their characters changed completely. So as a professional gamer in Dead or Alive, you just, if you choose to continue with that character, you have to learn everything that has been changed. You need to, what we do is we um, judge by the frame data, and we just learn every change to the system, and you try to implement that as much as you can. And what I like to do too, is I like to see how it measures up against certain other characters too. And it's just really, I know I'm probably just rambling on, but it just really depends on what your play style is too. Cause I have a tendency to change characters as well. So I always like to spice it up and use different characters and learn different things to see if they fit my play style as mm-hmm. much as I can. But um, like my um, my boyfriend, for example, he's one of the best DOA players. Uh, he uses Ryu Hayabusa, which he pretty much has changed almost in every installment of Dead or Alive. So, so it's really kind of a uh, you have to kind of develop a strategy of of who you want to yes. use and, and in what situation they kind of you they get used and you know who you play them against and and all that. Yes. See, I used to play uh, Soul Calibur years and years ago. That was the only real fighting game I was ever any good at. And there was just one character. <laughs> I had one. My, I, I only had one uh, one strategy. There was one character who had a big axe. And all you do is you just jump up and down with the axe and just knock people down. And nobody could beat me <laughs> because I just had one move. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is hilarious. So Yeah, it's kind of in a way like that. I mean, you pretty much utilize your character to the best of his abilities and – Certain, like I said, certain characters are best against other characters. It's mm-hmm. them. It's an uphill battle. And then that's what we have in fighting games is called tiers. So if you have a top tier character, which is just all around one of the better characters, and you have, and your character of choice is a lower tier character, you mm-hmm. can still win. That's the beauty of fighting games in general and that are alive is a little bit, I believe, at least in my opinion, is a little bit more balanced. <laughs> right. But it's still an uphill battle because on paper, the person who you the top character is going to have a lot of a, a better chance of winning because they have the better tools, mm-hmm. but you can still win. Are you are you entirely focused on on beat 'em up games? I mean, like Mortal Kombat, for example, which came out not not too long ago. Um, because I have also heard you are a big fan of Batman. Oh, Batman! Yes, I am a big Batman fan. I love it, but um, I'm sorry. What game were you talking about previously? I mean, I mean, for example, Mortal Kombat, the latest Mortal Kombat. Oh, Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I was never really too much into Mortal Kombat, to be honest. As a kid, I would play with it, but I, well, that was my button mashing day, so I had no idea what I was doing. And um, for some reason, I just never really picked up any of the recent copies of Mortal Kombat. I mean, I love the series and the movies, but for some reason I just never really got into actually playing the game. The the most the most interesting about Mortal Kombat X is actually not the game itself, but the videos on YouTube about people puking because at some point they they don't realize they are not real what's what's happening on the screen. And then they <laughs> then they puke because they oh connected, my goodness. they connected to real, you know, fatality or stuff. 
Um, uh -huh. So that was kind of like, wow, they some people actually get sick seeing so, those real animations. Um, I know. It, it did look really real. I mean, I did see the trailers at E3, a few, I think, a few E3s ago, and I was surprised. I was like, wow, this game is just really graphic, and it is really realistic. They've been getting more realistic for a while now, so I guess it's only a matter of time before there's intestines oh, yeah. and things. <laughs> yeah, no, I I hear you, but yeah, I've always been impressed by the way it looked, but I don't. Nothing ever really kind of got me going to actually go purchase it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So you are really focusing on a Dead or Alive for for professional gaming thing. Uh huh. I see. I see. Yeah. Um. So so are there um so so let's talk a bit about your origin because um where you were coming from because I heard your your first console was actually an NES. Uh yes, I believe it was. My brother had purchased the NES and as a kid I just used his. And your your love for Batman is connected to the Batman NES or something or just the franchise or uh, my love for Batman comes through the franchise. Also, another thing my brother was a big fan of is he was a big Batman fan. And, of course, I got to see all of the comics he got and everything related to Batman. And then he kind of just rubbed off on me to the point where, oh, I love Batman. Let me see that comic. Oh, oh you got that movie. I want to see that movie. So I grew up in a Batman-oriented household, so I had to love Batman or else I was just an outcast. Uh, right, right. So, so you got really a lot influenced uh, influenced by your brother and what he was doing. Oh right? yeah. So you were the smaller yeah. sister, kind of. Yeah. Yes, I was. I was the small, annoying sister that liked to tag along and like, "Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh my God, leave me alone." <laughs> that's 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 pretty pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yes. So, so what were your parents thinking? about about this career option? Um, well, as a teenager, I was always playing video games, and they thought it was just a harmless hobby. They're just, well, you shouldn't dedicate so many hours to playing games, and I would be a nerd and just completely take off and go to the arcade sometimes, back, you know, when arcades were actually alive. And yeah. um, when I, when I um, came up to them, I'm like, hey, I'm think I'm gonna quit my job and try this out they're just like are you crazy because I mean it was pretty unorthodox at the time even now you're giving up somewhat of a profession to play video games for a living it's jarring for any parent to kind of accept and comprehend saying that you're, you're gonna do what and at first they were just very skeptical and they thought I was wasting my time and they're just, okay that's does not seem like it's going to pay off until eventually when, you know, CBS started picking up and then I started traveling a lot and going to different tournaments. They're like, well, well, yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, we'll see where this goes. And, um, uh, it seems like it's doing well for you. So, uh, yeah, well, for anything you want to do, we'll support you. Uh, great. Great. Um, it's, it's just interesting because I think, I think you and I, we are the same age. And I remember when I was a child in the nineties and uh, late, late eighties, um, video gaming was a geek thing. And my mother would tell me, go outside, see the real world. Don't spend so much in front of the television, you know? So <laughs> I still say that to him. Oh, goodness. Yes. I mean, fresh air is good, but, you know, sometimes you got to go into your little dungeon and get your soda and your snacks and just have an all, all out gaming session. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, so I have the feeling that gaming became a bit more social, social, um, social and a bit more accepted by society. I don't know what you, what you're feeling about that is. Uh, I agree with that sentiment before, back in the day of, um, way back, it was looked upon as, you know, a dorky, nerdy, you had no life, you just spent all of your time playing video games, where, especially a lot of conferences I've been to recently, they have statistics up that, you know, pretty much everyone is gaming, from your frat boys to even cell phone gaming to women over 40, women 
that are married with kids, they're on Candy Crush constantly. It's just so mainstream and white accepted now that everybody pretty much is gaming on some level. Right. Doesn't that take the magic away of being somebody special to be good at gaming now that everybody is doing it? I don't think it takes away because, um, going back to the previous example, somebody who play, plays Candy Crush all day, um, they're not going to go to a Candy Crush tournament. <laughs> you know, they, they play it for fun. It's addicting. And then you have people like Dota champions that are going to arenas. People are lining up to buy tickets. State stadiums are being sold out. They're winning million dollar prizes. I mean, there's still something special about being a professional gamer because you have that skill that not a lot of other people have and people want to see it. They want to see the game played to its absolute top level. Right. You could, you could, you could equate that to, you know, professional sports. Like a lot of people play, play soccer yes. or play hockey or something, but not very many people exactly. play it well enough to be, you know, a professional. And, and you want to go and you see, you want to see the, the top tier people playing it because, you know, watching me and three other guys playing it in the lawn is not entertaining. Right. It's it's completely different where, you know, you can have fun watching somebody casually game, but if you actually are super dedicated to a certain game and you really want to learn it and you really want to be good at it, you can't go wrong with seeing the absolute best play it. And then you kind of, wow, I, I really want to learn how to play just like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting because... Um, just, just last year, by the end of last year, I made an interview with Alexei Peshetnov, you know, the creator of Tetris. And he, uh -huh. he was, he was telling me that he had plans to step into esports himself by releasing an e official esports version of Tetris, which he actually released this summer. So seems like oh, nice. on, on one hand, as AJ said, it's a niche. On the other hand, it's getting a bit more accepted, you know, as a sports, I yes. guess. And um, I think it was a few, a few, um, a few weeks ago, where a video went viral on YouTube about an, at an e-gamer event, somebody showing a middle finger or something, and then he oh, got a oh, fine. Wow. Yeah. Wait, so, what? In, in uh -huh. like in Tetris blocks or or just? In, no, 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 oh. no, no, no. Just just as a, as a tournament. I, oh, I don't oh. I don't even remember which game, but it was all over the German games media. You know. Really? They were like, yeah. Somebody got fi fined for showing a middle finger. You know. Um, huh. Yeah. So Hello. so this was the point where I was like, okay, now now this is getting serious because. They are even mentioning such such cases in the in the uh, main media over here in Germany. Um, well, I guess I kind of just translate to you know, same as the NFL, where you get fined for certain things like excessive celebration and things. So it looks like it's trying to progress into an actual professional sport. And also, I guess an, another topic is cheating. You know, like taking drugs and stuff to to hire your reflexes. <laughs> yeah. Taking, yeah, taking my uh, thumb steroids <laughs> that's hilarious the only thing I don't agree with because um, certain players that have a hand in developing the game and have the game mm. a couple months beforehand and then it gets finally released and then there's a tournament maybe a month or so after you know they kind of have an unfair advantage but I think that's the only way you can really cheat a professional gaming otherwise, otherwise I mean it's pretty much anyone's game i'm just i'm just asking because that's kind of what i heard over here that they are starting to check for tracks and stuff um, well, i mean i could see funny <laughs> i could see like you know stimulants and stuff if you're doing like a long tournament or or if you want to you know be slightly faster reflex but i mean yeah i guess i can see that but um i don't know i just I haven't personally had any experience with anybody, you know, trying to take any type of performance enhancing drugs. Um, so yeah, so I don't, I don't know if if we may ask some some critical things, um, but 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 what 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 what, what I sometimes. What I'm, what I sometimes see on on Facebook among my my female gaming involved friends is. 
Um, and you probably know that too, because you are like the contact I have with the most common friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that yes. was just, just like a surprise when I found it out. Like you, you are my female Facebook friend who has the most common friends with me. And, um, and I figure that some, some people, some female figures in the gaming scene are really threatened unwell for some reason you know like uh, women are not supposed to be in the game industry or something um mm -hmm. that's that's something i see sometimes on their on their facebook wall posts and i think that's pretty pretty sad i don't know did you yeah. did you ever experience any negativity um i like i said i've been in the dead or alive community, just from my experience, I've been competing for so long. When I first started, I didn't have a microphone because I just played online and everybody assumed I was a male that was pretending to be a female. And they're just, oh, you big troll. Why don't you just use your real name? You're not a real female. You're such an attention whore trying to pretend you're a girl until eventually I got a microphone and they're just, oh, you are actually a girl. Okay. Seriously? Oh, my God. <laughs> and um, from there, you know, I just got to know them. I got I played with them frequently to the point where they just started building that respect for me because they saw I was really serious about the game. I did my research. I played and I loved the game. And we just and I would show up at tournaments and they were just being, oh, you know, that's Vanessa. She's one of the better players. But at the same time, there I still don't want to lose to her. But <laughs> it won't be too bad if I do. So, um, what's your perspective uh, perspective about the development of um, females in the gaming? Because we did um, an interview with the Fractals. <laughs> Unfortunately, the uh -huh. last one before they they decided to split up the group. Um, uh -huh. But but. Well, I don't I think they that... decided to split. I think I think Ubisoft decided to split up the group. They didn't really decide that. Uh, well, who knows? It's not it's not officially known which way it was. Um, anyway, I know that Crystal Herring, the the manager of the group, the leader of the group, she always said for her it's important to be seen as a gamer, not as a gaming girl. Yeah, here's a better question. You know what happens? What do you think about when? You know, like like schlubs like refer to you as a gamer girl and make it a point to quantify it as uh, quantify you as that. Like, does it matter mm -hmm. really? You know, back when uh, I first started, I was very just because everybody would always reference me as, "Oh, she's the best female that real life player." Mm -hmm. I would never kind of get to the oh, I'm one of the top DOA players. You know what I mean? It would always just be a separate category where there's say there's the top five players. Oh, and then there's Vanessa who's a top female. Right. And that used to bother me to, why can't I be included in the list with everybody else? Why do I have to kind of get separated into this different category where I'm just the top female to the point where it just didn't even matter anymore. It's just, I just appreciate gaming on all levels and it was kind of, uh, how would I explain it properly? But I would just love to be accepted for my skill period. So it didn't even matter that, oh, it's a gamer girl. I was like, yeah, I'm just a female who plays a game. But, you know, still they're recognizing my talent and they were loving what I was doing. So it just didn't even phase me at that point where, I mean, uh, to the point, I think there will be a point where, you know, girls in gaming won't be as weird as it could be i guess today to this day it's more accepted now than it was a while ago as i we were talking about previously that mm -hmm. almost everybody's gaming so right, right. i think even a little bit more in the future it won't even be a special issue it'll just be somebody who's playing a game mm -hmm. that's interesting because um i i never i never heard of of this Gamergate affair before before we did research um, for the Fractals um, uh -huh. interview because 
I mean, in my family, I played against my grandfather because he got me into gaming. And my mom played um, Boulder Dash and Tetris against me and Dr. Mario and all the other games <laughs> with the Game Boy. So for me, it was a no-brainer. Well, yeah, I mean, to, to hell, uh, during, yeah. That, yeah. during the Extra Life thing, I called my mom up because she used to play these games. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not, you know... That is funny. It, uh-huh. it's not really an issue when you, you think about it. It's, it's, you know, it just seems like really kind of a, I don't know, it's just a unfortunate sort of closed-minded um, system where people have to feel a need to quantify things as female or male or whatever when it's all the same thing. If you're exactly. If you're going to beat my ass at a game, then you're better at a game than me. I'm not going to be like, well, she's the girl that beat me, but here's the other people that beat me. She's in a separate category. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's just it. I mean, because it's weird, because I mean, I'm. It's just, yeah, when you're at a tournament, you expect some guy that's been playing for hours and someone who looks like, I don't know, Mike Ross to beat the shit out of you. And then here I come, 110 pounds, and they're like, oh, this tiny little thing, just beat the shit out of me. You know, <laughs> just, no, she's not special. I mean, who is she? God. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, for, for, as I said, for me, it's it's a no-brainer. So it's actually very unfortunate. So here's my question. Do you think that, um, because I asked some other friends of mine in the game industry, and some of them uh-huh. said that that the fractals, a game like, a game crew, a group like fractals is not needed anymore because women are equalized um as man in gaming and other of my female gaming friends said no they should have kept the fractals alive and to to wait until it's 100 percent equal you know and they are they're Mm -hmm. not seen as different anymore because of a different gender so what's your opinion about that it's just a good marketing tool for ubisoft really you have these girl gamers who are good at the game and just in terms of just competition-wise, I mean, they're still just gamers who compete and who are good at the game, but on a marketing standpoint, they're good for business. They go to events, they look good, they play good, and they draw people to their products and to their games. So so you think that they are not around anymore doesn't really make a difference for the, for the females in the gaming industry? Uh, I think they are just a good example of what you can do as a female gamer. I think they are just positive role models for women. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, women who are just kind of afraid to go out there and play games, they see somebody like the Frag Dolls and they think, oh, well, you know, they're doing good things. They're out there. They're competing. I want to be like them. And if they can do it, I, I can do it too. So I think uh, they're definitely just should be around and they're I don't see why Ubisoft would need to get rid of them. I think they're awesome and they would mm. be mm. a positive thing for all female gamers to kind of aspire to be like. Yeah. Well unfortunately the group is not around anymore, but it's good it's good to know yeah. your opinion because as I said, I totally got um two different options. Uh, sorry, I mean, I got two totally different opinions from from uh, people that I ask. From mm-hmm. yeah, so it's good to know your opinion. Um, but I saw, but I saw you also you also do other stuff. I mean, I saw you actually were a model at a calendar Women of Gaming 2015. Right, that is correct. Did you get that calendar yet, Yerk? No. Oh no. man. Well, Jay and I, we had that idea. We're going to put it on the wall behind him just to be creepy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I just was brought to my attention that it's not for sale online anymore. And I was like, oh, really? It, I'm it not even it, notified of this. It is It is still for uh, for sale. Not on the official side, but there is a store that still has some some units left and uh, so oh, it's okay. it's the first it's the first time as a part of this pre- preparation for the interview that i bought uh-huh. a calendar <laughs> that is only valid for one month <laughs> so <laughs> i know oh, so no. i don't know which 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 month actually were you part of 
I was January, so I was January. the very beginning. <laughs> okay. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> so so we, we, had, we had this idea of making the joke and putting behind me that January. And I would say, uh -huh. for me, it's always January. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. That would have been hilarious. So we yeah. watch the interview just grind to a halt, and you'd be like, "Well, goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was saying. I, I was saying to Ache, hopefully she understands the joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, yeah, that would have been amazing. Well, <laughs> maybe another time. So, so actually, how did it happen that you were um, casted for the Women of Gaming calendar? That would interest me because I guess that's something special. Oh yes. Uh, when I was first, I was first approached by um, I forget what company it is now, but it was a uh, his name was Mark, and he worked with a lot of he was an indie game developer, and we um, he contacted obviously twelve girls. Um, there was some that were pro gamers, some that were cosplayers, and he threw out this idea that oh I'm interested in making a calendar for a gaming girl calendar and I would really love for you to be a part of it. We're going to do a kickstarting campaign, raise a certain amount. And then if we actually receive that amount, then we can proceed with actually developing the calendar. And so we reached the amount that we needed to fund the calendar. And from then on, he just gave us, okay, this is what we're going to do. You're going to each get this set amount. You're going to hire a photographer and we're going to take the pictures and then we're going to put it all together and then make this calendar. And then, you know, hopefully people who love to follow the girls that are on there will like to have a, you know, it's like a special little memento. You have special pictures of these girls who, You know, you just usually you can follow them in tournament scenes or Facebook or social networking, and now you have it. It's, it's I thought it was really neat. It's just, especially my picture was kind of like a maximum type photo shoot that I was going for. So I really was pleased with the way that picture turned out. And I was looking through the calendar, and there's just really some beautiful pictures in there. And I think if I hadn't been in it, I would have loved to purchase one for myself. Oh. Okay, and that's <laughs> that's interesting to know. Actually, use it as your profile picture. I see on Facebook. Uh, yes, I have uh, as I think a background um, picture, and um, I forget what it's called, but yeah, the little banner. The cover picture. Yes, that's what it is. Thank you. I can be social media retarded sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well. You know the the phrases changes so often. Sometimes you know, I, yeah. I, I when when I was young, um, the things were called emote icons. Now they are called emojis. You know, <laughs> yes. So I love my emojis. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, just different terms. When sometimes. I was young, I didn't even have emoticons. I had to use a colon and a parenthesis and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All these would... different symbols. Yeah, I'm exactly. Writing in hieroglyphics. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And my parents would ask me what's that, and I would say, "Turn your head around on your shoulder. Then you can then you can see the face." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so so I guess you're not really connected to retro in any way anymore, or do you still play your NES sometime? Um, you know, actually, I lost a lot of my old systems as a teenager. Something happened where the Uh, I had like a house issue and I lost a lot of my old systems. So, oh. yeah, so the only thing I have now is my Xbox 360 and my Xbox One. Well, there's eBay. You can you can buy it again. <laughs> yes, I can buy it again. I haven't gotten to it yet, but now that I'm trying to do consistent streaming, I'm looking at other systems I can kind of implement on there. I recently just started on Steam and it has, by far, I don't know if it's, Steam itself, or it's the game I'm playing, has been giving me the biggest headache I've ever had, <laughs> ever in my streaming time. Oh, oh my lord! Okay, the game just crashes like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're actually considering looking back into into your 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 roots of gaming, into the classic gaming. Uh, yeah, I was always. I mean, one of my friends recently, actually, her uh, boyfriend bought her an NES, and she's been having a ball just playing, you know, retro Mario. 
So, and then I was looking at it, I was like, you know, if that could actually be fun. Maybe I should look into getting some of the older systems and maybe going back and playing a few of them. Maybe we should include you if we do another Twitch thing and play retro games. Oh, yeah, for sure. Maybe a little bit of Batman. <laughs> oh, God, no, don't, oh, God. don't play that game. Well, um, I don't even remember that game, but it probably will be horrendous for me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, um, I mean, um, you probably played the NES Batman or something. I have that somewhere. Keep it. I don't think I did. If not, I mean, you got to... For these days, my memory is completely shot. So anything beyond access, sometimes I don't remember. <laughs> but, it's, um, so it's time to I refresh. I don't remember at this time. Yes, but I don't remember that, though. Jeez, let me think of the last retro game I remember. Um, geez. I just remember for sure I was going to the arcade, and I remember playing a lot of the Ninja Turtle side scroller, you know Turtles in Time. Uh, yeah, yeah, Turtles. Yeah. Yes, I actually, loved that one. Actually, I have a real a card in my living room, and I have Turtles on it. That, yes, that was a good one. Yeah, and and I know I know my internet didn't work, and I had a technician over over um over noon. And he was like, "Oh, does this a card machine, uh, arcade machine work?" And I said, "Yes, of course." And uh, said, "What what game is plugged in?" I said, "Turtles." And they're like, "Wow, I will make my lunch break here. Can we can we play <laughs> through the turtles, please?" <laughs> of course, I remember that from my childhood going to the arcades. I said, "Yeah, sure." Like, and then we played together uh, through the turtles in in my living room. The technician, the technician from my cable company, and me. <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah so so i i certainly know turtles uh one of the most awesome games ever yeah yes so, yeah, I so, love some turtles. so so maybe we can maybe we can work something out together if you like oh yeah for sure first i have to actually work on getting my hands on some retro games but then from there we could definitely proceed well, yeah, great, great. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not the expert in in all gaming, but I I know some, some, yeah. <laughs> yes, but, hey, it's kind of hard to be an expert in all games because I was actually in a um, reality TV show called Ultimate Gamer, and the premise was they were trying to find the best gamer. But the thing about it is, as a professional gamer in a certain game. You kind of can't be good at all games, and the whole purpose of the show was you have you had to be the best at every game there if you wanted to win the prize money. And I was like, oh my god, I cannot play racing games. I can't do this. And it was a struggle for all of us because we all were good in certain games, and then we sucked in other ones. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> kind of hard to be a jack of all trades. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Yeah, anyway. Okay there? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Choke on a toenail. I just laughed and uh well, you know. <clears throat> yeah. It's 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 a very interesting conversation. So 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 you, you did a lot of you did a lot of stuff besides professional gaming, the calendar thing and even <clears throat> even being part of those of such a reality show, that's that's really interesting. Is is there yeah, anything yeah. else you did that we yeah, don't what know have, about? What have you been up to since the uh because you know you were in this calendar, which was for 2015. Which so I mean, obviously you're still you're still out there, and, and people still know who you are and, and everything. So, but the, but the show yeah. went off in in '09 initially. So, what have you been yeah. doing since then? Um, well, since '09, I did championship gaming series. I've been competing in some a major tournaments, and it was in um, cyber games. And there's some grassroots tournaments. I might be going to one in Philadelphia by the end of this month. Uh, World Cyber Game Ultimate Gamer was a reality show that I did for that year. I forget what year it is now. I, like I said, my memory is not what it used to be. <laughs> um, and of course, I did the female gaming calendar. There was another project that was in the works. I'm not sure if I can even really disclose anything that kind of went on with that. And that was earlier this year. And um, from there, I've been doing my Twitch channel. It's it's really fun for me. I just love the whole aspect of Twitch. So 
I've been trying to work on that. And of course, you know, connecting with the people on my social media, because I, I love talking and connecting with other gamers. And um, of course, you know, I do my job where I actually get, you know, my consistent pay. So that eats up a lot of my hours. But, you know, I try to do as much of the gaming stuff as I can on my free time. Yeah, I saw you the last couple of weeks, weekends on, on Twitch and, you know, and I, since, uh -huh. and as you know that because I, I, I asked you in, in a private um, whispering message when you would have time and if you would like to be interviewed and stuff. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and and um, this morning, actually, I came right before you went to bed. So I was like, okay, woo. Yeah. So, so, so usually, usually you are online around my breakfast time on weekend. So, uh, yeah, the only thing because I have a swing shift. So for me, it's night time. So I get off of work late, and then the yeah. only time I can either do it is in the morning or late yeah. at night. So, so when I throw food into my face, I watch you sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. And I will be trying to think of my next meal too. I mean, like, I can't just pig out on camera. If you see me sometimes, people will uh, mention, because I have a very um, awesome follower named Toxic Oreos. And for some reason, we always just start talking about Oreos and cookies and Nutella. And I'm like, stop, you're making me hungry. I can't leave. <laughs> yeah, that's actually something the Fractals did permanently too, talking about ice creams. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right, desserts right. are my weakness. I love sugar. <laughs> well, who doesn't, right? That is true. So, <clears throat> so what 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 else are your plans for the future? Um, like I said, right now I just am working on my Twitch. I'm gonna actually work on my YouTube. I have a few things that I have going on, but um, for now, especially for the end of this year in December, I might be going to Philadelphia for a Dead or Alive tournament. So that's as far as I have planned right now for this year. But next year is a whole different animal. So hopefully I can get more stuff going on and then share it more with everyone who follows me. And, you know, just take it from there. Play it by ear. And so let's... Yeah. What? What? Uh, yeah, just, just, just talk, H -H. Oh, Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> where can people find you online? You can find me on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash veness01, V-N-E-S-S-01. That is also my Snapchat name. That is also my Instagram name. And um, you can also find me on Facebook, which is V-A-R-T-E-A-D-A-1. And then if you actually go to one of my social networks, then you can pretty much follow me on every single one since they, I pretty much, especially on my Twitch, I have them all listed. Yep. We will link to all these in the podcast description so that people can follow you and check you out and all that stuff. Yes, please. I'm always willing to, and then you, everyone has some awesome suggestions, especially that when I'm kind of confused, even, oh, what game should I get next? And then they give out these suggestions. I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. So I would love to have more people and they can also just give me more of what they would like to see from me. Cool. Great. Great. Ah. And, and thanks again for your patience with uh, working um, this this out. This was really troublesome today. So <laughs> uh, don't, no problem. Trust me, I've had many issues with Skype before, so I completely understand and I just know. That's what happens when we get reliant on technology these days. When yeah. something goes wrong, it's kind of, all right, now we got to find a way around it. <laughs> well, the good old phone always works. <laughs> yes. You can't go wrong with the good old telephone. Great, great. Uh, <clears throat> great. All right, well, it was great talking to you guys. Thank you so Thank much you. for having yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. thanks I again hope for coming. Uh, no problem. I'm glad we were able to sort this out, and then hopefully, you know, we can chat again in the future. Yeah. Yes, yeah. stay in touch and see if we can get something on the retro area that you're planning to expand to. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. All right, guys, it was great talking see you. to you. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. So that was Vanessa Ortega. Uh, yeah. Once again, you can you can find her on Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Vanessa O one. That's V N E S S O one. She's also at YouTube, youtube.com slash D-O-A-V-A-N-E-S-S-A. -S -S -A. Uh, Facebook, you can find her at uh, facebook.com slash uh, VArtega1. Uh, Twitter, it's O-V-A-N. Or uh, actually, Twitter, it's, it's at 
O V A N three S S A O. We'll link to all these in the podcast description below. Um, for me, you can find me. I'm online at justwestafeld.com. Jurg is over there at nafcom.eu. Uh, sceneworld.org is the is the website for the magazine. You can go on there. You can find interviews and things and stuff and podcasts Read and issues. Issues online, actually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't forget that. Right, right. Um, and, uh, and, and once again, Extra Life is still going on. So if anyone wants to go to our Extra Life pages and donate money, do it because there's still a month left. And that would be cool. That would be, you know, you got extra money from Christmas. Eh, put it towards kids. And that's extra dash life dot org slash ajh or part <laughs> that's extra dash life dot org slash participant slash ajh for me and extra dash life dot org slash participant slash nafcom for yorg thank you aj mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so uh we'll, we'll see you next time uh for see yorg. you next time i'm aj bye i'm yorg bye bye <laughs> oh no! <laughs>